Hello, this is for ISOL 631 at the University of the Cumberlands. The textbook is Security Policies and Implementation Issues. This is for Chapter 13, IT Security Policy Implementations. Information technology security policies are the foundation upon which you build good security habits. IT security policies define what business and technology risks will be controlled. Users can turn to policies for guidance in their daily work. Policies are a useful tool for creating a risk culture that protects information. The adoption and effective implementation of these policies is evidence to regulators, customers, and shareholders that due care is being taken to protect the company and its customers' personal information. The stakes are high. While implemented, security policies build brand confidence and help an organization achieve its goals. Poorly implemented security policies lead to breaches, fines, and damage to brand value, and they undermine confidence in the organization. Everyone must follow the policies if they are to be effective. Security policy implementation needs user acceptance to be successful. Absent user acceptance, the policies may not be consistently implemented. They may be sometimes seen as optional. You can gain user acceptance in part by effectively communicating policies that are also easy to understand. The security awareness program, in addition to other methods, helps users understand policies and why they're important. Implementation of security policies also requires management support. Thorough planning allows you to overcome challenges and gain that support. This chapter examines a simple process approach to implementing IT security policies. Walks you through this high level process and explores the major issues encountered by implementing security policies. You'll read how to overcome challenges and the importance of communication plan. So the learning objective of this chapter is to describe issues related to implementing information security policies. The chapter will cover topics including what a simplified implementation process looks like, what is meant by target state, how to win executive support and why it matters, what good policy language is, what's involved in employee awareness and training, how to educate employees through proper dissemination of information, what policy implementation issues you should anticipate, what the roles of governance and monitoring the security policy implementations are, what best practices are allowed to implement IT security policies. So the key concepts you will look at include organizational implementation issues for ISS policies, differences between public and private IT security policy implementations, hindrances to the dissemination of policies, and development and implementation strategies for security awareness policies. So a simplified implementation process. There are many approaches to implementing IT security policies. The approach can vary based on any number of factors, such as organizational need, level of technical complexity, industry, culture, and maturity of change process. Assume, for example, you have an organization adding mobile solutions for the first time. This may be a major project for an organization with no prior experience in this area. There should be a detailed IT security plan that includes looking at business risks, cyber attacks, compliance requirements, policy changes, employee awareness, training, policy implementation, governance, and more. The addition of new mobile solution could be expensive and time consuming. Now consider an organization with years experience at implementing mobile solutions. Also assume you wish to make a change to security policies. In many ways the process is the same. 
you want to look at the policy change from the perspective of business risks, cyber attacks, compliance requirements, policy changes, employee awareness, training, policy implementation, and governance. However, the scale and effect on the second case would be smaller. Introducing change into a mature organization with extensive mobile experience significantly reduces the risk the time needed to consider the risk and implementation of a policy change. In fact, while the thought process may be the same, the experience and knowledge would mean some of these steps are less formal. In both cases, it's a good practice to think about the risk needs consistent document them well. There are different ways to describe policy goals and objectives. The value of the policy will often be judged by how well you can describe the goals and objectives. The more persuasive the descriptions, the more people will value the policy. One of the more effective techniques is to describe goals and objectives in the following ways. First, we have business risk. Describe how the policy will reduce risk to the business. And then compliance. Describe how the policy will ensure the business is compliant with laws and regulations and threat vectors. Describe how the policy will prevent or detect IT security threats. Business risk can be expressed in terms of how the policy either enables the business or reduces business disruptions. This risk can also be described as business risk terms such as described in the risk and control self-assurance. That's the RCSA. And it is typically produced annually by the business, describes its top risks, controls, and barriers to their objectives. Compliance relates to the legal and regulatory mandates a business must follow. Certain security policies are required by laws and regulations. Describing how the security policies help the organization to meet legal mandates is another valuable addition to the business. Threat vectors should be very, should be very much a business concern. A threat vector is the way in which an attack is launched. Often these are more technical threats that the business might not understand well. Describing a SQL injection attack, for example, may not have much meaning to the business executive. However, describing the results and the impact to the business will be important to her or him. You can explain a SQL injection attack, for instance, is leading to the theft of customer credit card information or the takedown of the company's web site. So overcoming technical hindrance to policies. First is uh, distributed infrastructure. Security policies apply throughout the enterprise. As such, they apply to a centralized view and control of risks. We design central set of policies and apply them across the enterprise. However, today's technology is highly decentralized. Smart devices are mobile. Users, laptops, and desktops have tremendous computing power. Remote offices have servers and complex data closets supporting local networks. And these are just a few examples. All these add up to what's known as distributed infrastructure. That's a term for an organization's collection of computers, including laptops, tablets, and smartphones, networked together and equipped with distributed system software. So that they work together in one, even from various locations. For many organizations, the amount of technology outside the data center is significant. How do you implement centralized security policies in a decentralized environment? It's challenging. To target state must be described how to accomplish this. You first look at the administration of the distributed infrastructure. Fortunately, while many technologies are distributed, many administration tools are centralized. Centralized administration tools allow for policies to be centrally dis uh, distributed. A classic example is malware protection. Most organizations use a central malware management tool to 
keeps the malware scanners up to date. Updating typically occurs when the desktop or laptop is connected to the network. An agent on the device communicates with the central server and downloads the latest updates. Outdated technology. Another challenge for describing a target state is how to deal with outdated technology. Outdated technology is hardware or software that has become obsolete and makes it difficult to implement best practices consistently. Outdated technology generally does not adhere to current best practices. When that occurs, you must decide how to address the lack of security controls within policies. And you have four basic choices. Replace outdated technology, write security policies to best practices and issue policy waivers for outdated technology that inherently cannot comply, write security policies to the lowest, most common standard that the technology can support, even if it's outdated, and write different sets of policies for outdated technologies. The ideal solution is to replace all outdated technology. However, that's not always an option, especially in a declining economy when many organizations are cutting costs. Of the three remaining choices, none is good. Generally, the least objectionable choice is option two. That's writing security policies to best practices and issue policy waivers for outdated technology that inherently cannot comply. The technology that's not outdated will conform to policies. Technology that not, can, cannot conform to typically is typically granted a waiver with additional hardening to mitigate risk as much as possible. Waivers provide transparency on the risk the business is accepting. At a minimum, any waiver granted should require annual review. This will provide an opportunity to review the waiver and the risk and additional cost it in, introduces into the control environment. And lack of standardization throughout the IT infrastructure. Another technical challenge is the lack of standardization within the infrastructure. And that can have two causes, a lack of consistency in configurations, and two, deployment of diverse population of technologies. Lack of a consistent configuration is the problem that arises when similar technologies are used in different ways by different lines of business. Each line of business has its own technologies, applying different standards to similar technologies. Assuming, for instance, you have a company in physical stores and an online presence. Both lines of business have an inventory application that the public cannot access. The application may be on the same operating system and perform the same basic functions, yet the configuration may look completely different if two different groups of administrators maintain the application. Executive buy-in. Ultimately, you will need senior managers formal buy-in and support for any costs they need to incur. When dealing with executive management, define expectations clearly. Senior executives generally have little time to create specific strategies. They expect well-defined security approaches and recommendations. They might need their input on undecided key issues. However, executives expect you to do your homework and to engage their teams. You should have already spoken to their staff and worked out most of the details. When a CISO is in front of an executive to talk about implementing security policies against the target state, it should be a short conversation. The conversation should focus on, this is our recommended approach, and this is what I need. The executive will want to know the following at a minimum. The level of commitment being asked of his or her team, the impact of the policies on the current environment, the value of the policies bring, in other words, what risks the policy addresses, and the metrics of success, how success will be measured. So executive management sponsorship. Without it, executive management sponsorship, users will be less likely to be eager to participate in awareness training and to support the policy implementation. 
Support for a policy implementation takes time away from individuals' regular job. Many organizations are understaffed and overcommitted. Security policy implementation may not be seen as valuable or urgent. Executive management sponsorship changes that perspective. You should expect to fund the implementation with a defined budget. Buying tools and created training materials are startup costs. These costs may not be the current but be in the current budget. Additionally, you should expect a form of communication from management supporting the program. This communication can be a single email that emphasizes the importance of the team participation. This tone at the top is important to overcome common objectives such as I'm too busy right now. Efforts to gather support should not be limited to a single executive. Security policy implement spans the enterprise. It means you should seek multiple executive supporters. Remember, awareness is ongoing and extends well beyond the classroom. Awareness and the communications plan should be executed throughout the policy implementation process. For example, partnering with corporate communications or marketing departments allow security message to be included in company newsletters and bulletins. The IT security team provides the content, whereas the communications and marketing department professionally packages the messages. Executive sponsorship in those areas can extend the messages reach. These executives can advise the IT security team and how best to market through the existing communication channels. So overcoming non-technical hindrance to policies. It's not just technical challenges that would delay security policies from being implemented. It's important to remember the human factors matter too. Success depends on how well people accept the policies. And the distributed environment. Many organizations operate in a distributed environment. Organizations are typically divided by lines of business, product, or geography. In a distributed environment, an organization is run by different individuals with different business objectives. Therefore, different parts of an organization have different views of risk. Or this diverse set of leaders can delay security policy implementation. First challenge is to get senior leadership to agree on a common set of security policies. Second challenge is agreeing on implementation timeline. And user types. A diverse set of views is not just reflected by leaders. The organization's general population also harbors a diverse set of views. The workplace has many types of users. Remember that you operate in an existing culture. Culture might not share the principles stated in the security policies. Even the best of circumstances, it takes time for security policies to change the culture. In the meantime, you must recognize the type of culture and users that exist at the time the security policy is being implemented. And then organizational challenges. Organizational challenges depend on the culture and industry. For example, the financial services industry puts significant resources into implementing security policies. In these organizations, the focus is on how to implement security policies to meet compliance laws and regulations. So for a strategy for implementing the policy, Things you need to do include have effective communications. You need to decide how you're going to effectively communicate. You must have executive support, otherwise they will block what you're trying to do. You need to have realistic expectations. You must realize the culture that you are working in. You must show the expected results, show people how this will help the organization. And you need to have flexibility. Uh, again, you're working in a specific culture and working with different types of technologies. They need to be flexible on how you're going to implement the strategies. So organizational challenges for small companies include accountability. Small companies may not have the money, so it could be a lack of a budget. Also small companies have different priorities, so they may not have the priority for um, creating this type of policy. 
and also they might have tight schedules. So policy language. Writing policy statements like writing a legal contract, first two parties must agree on what they want to achieve, and then you must put it in a contract. Two parties can't agree on what they want to achieve. They can never agree on the contract language. In writing security policies too, this first step is off unmissed. When this occurs, the resulting policy language can lack context. The goals may seem confusing. In contrast, following an implementation process means getting agreement on a target state with funding and executive support. Writing policies supporting an agreed upon target state is much easier and provides a way to quickly gain approval for supporting policy language. Still don't underestimate the time it takes, especially in a large organization. Words can have different meanings to different people. You want to create a clear and concise policy in language that is easily understood. Be sure to assign clear accountability to specific roles. You must assume at some point that a policy will not be followed. A language must indicate who is accountable for example, assume the policy language states management is responsible to review an employee access every 90 days. Who is management, the manager, the line supervisor, the executive over the department? This language can be confusing. A better policy language statement would be all employees with direct reports must review their direct reports access every 90 days. You can now go to a system of record such as a corporate directory, and determine who should be performing what reviews. Be sure to be precise about which resources the policy covers. Avoid requiring specific products in a policy. Policy should focus on what needs to be achieved and not how. Often technology policy can have broad impl implications across multiple technology environments. So employee awareness and training benefits. The goal of employee awareness and training is to ensure that individuals have the knowledge and skills to need implemented security policies. The primary objective of a security awareness program is to educate users. A well-executed awareness and training program can do much more. Some additional benefits include reinforcing core organizational values, giving management an opportunity to demonstrate support, and created opportunities for employees to acquire new skills, leading to increased job satisfaction. Awareness includes teaching employees about policies and core security concepts. Effective security awareness helps drive acceptance. When users understand policies, they can be held accountable for observing the policies. This promotes a long-term security culture skill shift. With so much at stake, it's important to have a well thought out approach to education. So developing a security awareness policy. Effective security awareness training must reach everyone in the organization. This includes everyone with access to data, includes employees, contractors, and vendors. The foreign security awareness training may vary depending on the type of user. The form of security awareness training, um, for example, security awareness training for a vendor might be handled by the parent company. Contract with the vendor should specify the type of awareness training the client requires. Typically, the vendor is responsible for training its employees. This is different from contractors. Contractors usually go through the same type of training as the contracting company's regular employees. In this case, the contracting organization is responsible for security awareness training. Contractor training may be condensed, however. If a contractor could be on site for only a short time, three weeks, for example, it does not make sense to require weeks of security awareness training. 
Security awareness policy ensures that education reaches everyone. For example, the policy might require that all users receive security awareness training before being granted access to data. This might include complementing basic security awareness training during employee orientation. This ensures newly hired individuals receive training before handling sensitive information. The security awareness policy typically outlines the frequency and type of training required. Awareness training is conducted at least annually. Security awareness training policy may require the following type of training. New employee and contractor, a time of hire before access to data is granted. Promotion, as individuals are promoted into significantly different roles. All users have an annual refresher training post-incident, after a major security incident when lack of education was noted, and also vendor as defined in the contract. So disseminating information. Educating users can be a formal or informal process. Formal methods are those that communicate policies in a formal training environment, such as a classroom. The advantage of formal training is that you know you're taking your, who's taking the training and you can measure to some extent its effectiveness. Remember that people learn in different ways. It's a good idea to select multiple methods to disseminate security policy messages and materials. Because people learn differently, this increases your odds of reaching everyone. For example, those that find computer-based training less appealing may find a department newsletter more relevant to their job. It's also important to understand the culture and the audience in the organization. If the organization has many remote offices, face-to-face -face presentations of material will be less practical. In addition, some organizations distribute too many newsletters. Some users simply stop reading newsletters due to the volume. As a consequence, newsletters may not be the best choice for communicating critical information. Hard copy dissemination. Hard copies of policies are rarely sent out today. The challenge in sending out volumes of paper is the cost and accuracy of the material. All of the security policies, standards, processes, and guidelines at enterprise can be thousands of pages long. That doesn't include the support materials such as executive summaries, slide decks, and spreadsheets. Consequently, it's not practical to disseminate the material in print form. Printing costs would be high, it would be take time, money, and effort to disseminate. In addition, as soon as changes to the material are made, the printed material is out of date. Posting policies on the intranet. Best method for communicating security policies is through a document handling server such as an intranet. These servers use the multiple benefits such as cost to disseminate material are low, policies are kept current, policies are searchable, changes to policies can be highlighted, and they can link to supporting material. Many organizations already have an intranet. Consequently, the incremental cost for housing security policies is minimal. Centralized security policy management helps you keep the policies current. Email. Although level of sophistication on how policies are disseminated varies between organizations, most organizations still rely on email. Organizations depend on email to approve policies and keep management informed on implementation, implementation activities. Email also plays a central role in the most communication plans. Email allows you to notify a large population about major events. Also allows you to track everyone who has read the notification. This is a good tool for ensuring that individuals are properly notified of policy releases. Email also allows you to send out surveys and follow up on how well the implementation is being perceived. Brown bag lunches and learning sessions. Brown bag session is a training event. 
An expert on a topic is invited to share his or her thoughts, ideas, and experience. The term brown bag came from came about because sessions are usually held at lunchtime. People brought their own lunches in brown bags. No these sessions may or may not be held over lunch. And if it is, lunch may even be catered. The broad term brown bag can be applied to a wide variety of less formal training situations. Core concept of brown bag usually applies to a small group of people that has access to one or more experts. Participants ask the experts questions, the experts guide the conversation. There may or may not be a formal presentation. The I key idea is that sessions are less scripted than a formal classroom setting. So possibly implementation issues. When implementing policy, it's important to consider the organization's structure and related to its business size and technology. Another important consideration is the fit to its leaders. If a leader holds team meetings or town halls, the implementation plan might consider using these events to discuss the policy change. Different leader, leader may be more hierarchical in his or her approach holding a series of group meetings. That's most important is recognizing what difference and adjusting your security policy approach accordingly. Depending on the policy, one method is to find an early adopter. An early adopter implements the security policy ahead of rollout as a type of pilot. In this way, you can demonstrate the value of the policy and use the positive experience of the early adapter to overcome concerns and objectives. Early adapter of security policies will help lead an organization's successful implementation. Early adoption of security policies can be a source of pride for both an individual and the team. Changing an organization's culture and users' perception is not a one-time event. Simply releasing security policies does not change attitudes. Security is a tough sell because the benefits are not always obvious. Cultural changes come from having a clear value message that is demonstrated daily. It also requires collaboration and an understanding of the business. Culture is changed in small increments. That's why you need a well-planned step-by-step approach to implement policies. Three common messages during an implementation to delivery are personal accountability, directives and enforcement, and the value of security policy. While selling security has an upside, security is in the end mandatory in most organizations. A soft sell only goes so far in motivating employees. Although this technique has had some success, it can only go so far because of the consequences may not seem real. The most abstract the perceived argument is to why information security is important, less convincing it becomes. So public versus private implementations. For public organizations, it's often bound by compliance requirements such as HIPAA. For private organizations, implementation policies uh, to counter risks affecting them, usually smaller in size than public, and can implement changes more quickly. So in summary, in this chapter we learned how to approach implementation of security policies. This includes standardizing a process approach, learn the importance of executive buy-in and users acceptance of policies. Goal is to have policies become second nature to users over time. When users embrace security policies as part of their daily routines, they begin to see a cultural change. We learned about the importance of security awareness training, ensures that everyone understands the policies. Also increases the chances policies will be used. You can hold users accountable if they understand the policies. Chapter also examined the importance of governance and monitoring, discussed how security policies are published and disseminated, for various communication methods. Learn the importance of communication plan and how it's used to coordinate the consistent message. Thank you.